So mainly I'm, I'm just going to go over what I think should probably be talked about during an in-service when you guys are training people on this um, and then answer any questions you guys have. Um, so let me know if you guys have any other focus that you'd like to see. Um, you know, we can, I think we had two hours later for this meeting. I don't think we'll need that. Um, it's up to you guys really based on how many questions you have. Um, the stuff that I am going through um, shouldn't take long at all, uh, but we'll see how it goes. So first I'm just gonna bring up the software install and just go over that really quickly. So in case you do need to install this on someone else's computer. Just go into the Summit installer in there, there's an ultrasound folder. And then make sure you follow the instructions here. Um, I'll go over those in just a second. But mainly what you're gonna do is install the drivers first. So open this up and we run this, this setup folder to install the drivers. And then you want to install the build 3.5 and just run that, that installer. Um, once those two things are done, you should be good to go. And then other than that, there's a few other things in the installer um, in the instructions. Just walk through this. Um, basically, it's just walking through how to configure the ultrasound software. And a couple of things in Windows, basically just opening it up so when you have the installer installed, you can see it um, on hey, your toolbar, hey, your taskbar here. Yeah. Quick question. Is that the same for the smartest and the micros? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, and when you install it, you'll actually get a screen. Um, let's just go through this real quick. Um, <clears throat> so pretty pretty basic, you'll come in, um, you'll get this screen here, and you'll just want to uncheck everything but the smartest and micros. Oh, gotcha. And then the only other thing I wanted to note on these instructions, they're pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty easy to install. Um, is when you're configuring the ultrasound itself, um, and, and you can, I haven't had a problem plugging either one of them into the Summit base unit um, USB hubs. So you can plug it directly into the computer or into the Summit base, both um, seem to work fine. Some computers that don't have a lot of USB drives. Um, when you're configuring the actual software itself, you can it follow these instructions. One thing that I would do, if it's a if it's a desktop or a high resolution laptop, don't hide these toolbars. Um, it's just telling you to hide the toolbars. If you're doing a low resolution monitor or laptop, you need to, because otherwise the software won't fit on the screen. But I think it's easier to use if those toolbars aren't hidden. Um, so that's the only thing I would change. And I'm I've um, recommended that the reps don't quote the low end laptop with ultrasound, but they can if they want to. I just think that it looks a lot better with a higher resolution screen and it's nicer to not have to hide those buttons. So you may you may still see some go out with a low end laptop just because of cost reasons. But um, if as long as it's a high end laptop or a monitor, no need to hide any toolbars. That's another thing I wanted to go over on the install. And then when you're configuring it within the summit software, there is licensing, so you'll want to make sure that it's been licensed. Um, you can do a trial, obviously. You guys shouldn't be doing trials because you're, you're doing installs, so um, sh it should be installed or the, the trial enabled already. If not, just um, license it just like you'd license anything else. Once it's licensed, um, if it's an upgrade or if it's a new computer, um, you may need to go into edit test protocols and add the ultrasound test test protocols. So just like any test, you just right click, <clears throat> insert test, and here you'll see ultrasound and ultrasound concurrent. Uh, we'll go over those two modes, but you'll want to add both modes. Well, it's not necessary to add in both, both modes. If, if you're in a doctor's office that you don't think we'll ever be using concurrent, might as well keep it simple and just load ultrasound. Um, once you explain what the difference is, they may know right away whether they're going to need to use ultrasound concurrently with the EMG or nerve conduction software. So that's that, that can be up to you when you do the install. Also under test protocols, while we're here, when you go to ultrasound, they, they each have common setups, or um, and actually they're not common, they have unique setups. So in the ultrasound setups, you can set up presets, sites, 
Um, you could do what I have here, which is just different steps, or you could actually do structures like median nerve, hip, you know, or wrist or whatever, whatever makes sense to them. Um, I prefer this and I'll show you why as I get into it. Um, so when you create a site, just like nerve conduction, you'd, you'd name that site and then you would select what preset from the ultrasound software is going to show up under that site. The, if you look here, I have a refresh preset list. So if you've added a preset and you're not seeing it here, and this is in the ultrasound software, you'll just click refresh that preset list. Um, if you don't have ultrasound open, it's going to have to open ultrasound so it can pull in the latest presets. And stop me if you guys have any questions as we go through this. Hey, real quick while that's loading, Abe, uh, are these intended for running uh, as a joint system? Or do you foresee uh, doctors that have current, uh, you know, legacy Cadwell stuff may buy an ultrasound device independent? And and does the software run independent? I think it does, didn't it? it so, yeah, so it does. It's a good question. Um, anybody who has a Summit can buy ultrasound and add to the Summit. We are trying not to sell it. Um, we're, we're instructing the reps not to sell it as a standalone system. So they really need to be some owners. We're trying not okay. to sell it to wave owners. Um, it, but yeah, it can run independently on software just using a mouse. Um, but we're, we're not marketing it that way and we're not selling it that way. So there may be, you know, a unique situation where we do that, but it won't be the, it will be a, an exception to the rule. Okay. Gotcha. Right, second here. Now, do you, from your experience, have you already got some presets that you've set up for some doctors, like say a neurologist uh, or a physiatrist that have their own kind of thing set up? Is there going to be some uh, some kind of standard settings that you've come up with uh, that's based on your yeah, we're, out there? Yeah, we're actually we're actually working on that now. That's what this is, um, and I'm going to have and I'll email those out to you guys. Hopefully, I'll have that finalized next week. Um, but this is a start. These are some presets for Smartest. Um, and these are all kind of a clear, crisp view. I'm going to probably do another set of presets for a smoother view for MSK stuff. And then a set of presets for the Micris. Um, and once I'm done, I'll email those out to you. If you guys have an in-service before next week, let me know and I'll share these settings with you. So at least you have these presets to go on. Well, nice. Okay, thanks. Um, so, so what I'm doing here, I refresh the preset list. So now I can see all the presets that were in that, in the system. Um, so I can select a different preset for a, a site or structure or whatever I want to call this. Again, my presets are going to come like this. So superficial, shallow, median, and deep. And there's a reason for that. Um, and then here's, this is important. I always set the ultrasound window size to auto. Um, you may have a reason to set it to a specific resolution. Auto is going to use as much resolution as the software allows it to. So it, it, on concurrent mode, it's going to go to full screen. If there's a dual monitor on regular mode, it's going to take up approximately half the, um, or as much of the space that Sierra Summit allows it to. Um, I usually always use it. I'm encouraging the reps to, to quote a foot switch with ultrasound because it is helpful to have it. Um, and I usually always set it to run stop. Um, store, you can do either one, whatever the doctor likes. Um, run stop allows them to review back and find the best picture. Store is just going to store a snapshot of the ultrasound. And then, of course, you can decide whether you want to use the test selection bar or not. So this is ultrasound the same concurrent. switch you used for nerve conduction, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So because there's no, no buttons and controls on the ultrasound probe, it actually is pretty useful to have that foot switch um, to, to be able to pause the picture when they have a good picture to take or to take a snapshot because their hands are typically full. Um, ultrasound concurrent, same thing. You can have different settings for ultrasound concurrent if you want to. Maybe they're using this for needle injection. So you may want you know different settings that are more specific to needle versus um, structures and sites. And that's just kind of based on them. But I'll go through the kind of positives and negatives of each. Um, so that's, that's the setup within the Sierra. Um, before you can set up these, you need to go into your ultrasound software and actually set up your presets, unless you're just using our defaults. Um, but you'd come in there and, and create some presets for them in the ultrasound and then set them up here. 
the reason um, I'm just using um, depths is because I think it's easier to just use, just have them switch between depths rather than specific nerves. Because like an ulnar at the wrist and a median at the wrist are going to use uh, the same settings. But a median in the forearm and the ulnar in the forearm may need different settings. So having a, a specific um, you know, preset for a nerve, it, that's going to change as they, depending on where they're at in the body. Um, so that's why I think just doing, doing different depths is, is a better method. Uh, that's my opinion anyway. So that's, that's your setups in the Sierra. And then once those are set up, of course, you can go into edit study menu. Or edit study list. And change their studies and add ultrasound um, site to their study. So you can come in here and, you know, add ultrasound. So when, when I'm doing a demo, I typically show this where, you know, you can do a median motor you know, median sensory and straight into an ultrasound of the median nerve, and then continue on with the nerve conduction of the ulnar. And uh, really just to show the flow. They may not want it like that. They may want ultrasound at the bottom of nerve conduction. And so I'm, I'm assuming most likely they'll probably do the full nerve conduction, switch to ultrasound, and then switch to EMG. But it's just up to them. So they can have separate sites, um, just like anything. Okay. Um, other than that, I'm just going to jump right into the ultrasound software. So I'll start, I'm already in a patient, I think. So I'll just select the study here. And so here, the first time you select ultrasound, it does need to load. Um, once it's loaded, it'll pop right up. So they can switch back and forth between ultrasound and something else really quickly. Um, the first time around, it needs to load. Because I have it set, the resolution set for auto, it's taking up as much space as I'm giving it in this blue window. Why this is popping up. Um, it's always going to it's always going to stay on top the ultrasound software. So if you need to get into any settings or do anything else, you F7 is hide and that hides it. And now you can see any other windows that pop up. So that, that's kind of necessary to have that button just because of the um, behavior of the ultrasound software. So just make sure the ultrasound is fits nicely in this window tip. So I like it to take up as much of this blue screen as possible. So in order to do that, I usually hide this toolbar down below. So I have as much um, vertical and horizontal screen space as possible. I usually make the buttons here set to a medium size. Um, and by doing those two things, I can usually get maximize the amount of space this takes up because it kind of goes in steps. So even it's not going to always fill this blue screen completely. As you can see, if I have this over here, I'm going to see some blue on the outside. So it's, it's just it's going to pick the resolution that um, fits the best into this blue window that we have set apart for it. And again, I'm in I'm in regular ultrasound mode. I'm not in concurrent mode right now. Um, we'll go over that in a minute. So I just usually try to make it look nice, um, you know, kind of even, and then make sure there's enough room for it in that window. So the next time they open it up it just shows up just like this. And then I would go to edit save test parameters to keep those windows in that position next time they open up. Um, <clears throat> so now that I'm in here, I'm gonna go through just quickly this, some of the settings that you go through when you're setting it up. So under menu and customize, here under, under appearance, and we have general. Um, this is what I was talking about with those um, toolbars. If you if these are checked to auto hide, this toolbar across the top and this toolbar across the pot, bottom will be hidden unless you hover your mouse over it and then it appears. Um, so I usually don't hide those on a higher resolution laptop. Um, the rest of these settings, it's it's pretty simple. Like like Cadwell, the nice thing about the uh, ultrasound software is everything is in the settings menu. So when you go to um, menu customize you know, everything's in one of these tabs. So if you're looking for a setting, you're gonna find it here. If you spend some time familiarizing yourself with this, um, you'll know how to what you can and can't customize. Everything from font sizes, um, like here's the preset fonts, here's the measurement results fonts. So I usually use the, do the measurement results fonts as big as possible because when they print out those, those screenshots in their report, they wanna be able to see the measurements that they've made on the ultrasound. So I usually make that a, a 14 point. And presets list, I maybe make that like a 12 
um, and just just depending on the resolution of the monitor and how big they want that font to be. Um, a lot of these other things are just how much of the screen different modes are going to take up. Um, so I'm not going to get into much of this. You, I would recommend you go through the help file and kind of see what the, these different things do. But for the most part, you're not going to change very many settings in here, except for the ones that um, are instructed to change in the installation manual. Um, in appearance, when you go to skins, we show the Arctic black is what we've been showing it at trade shows. I think it's good to be consistent. Um, so I think we, when we install it, we should install it with the Arctic black and then the buttons we use with a simple blue. That way, anybody who sees Cadwell ultrasound, it has the same look and feel. Um, so I recommend using the skins that are recommended in the installation instructions. Uh, so that's those are the main things I wanted to show. Actually, let me go back to that really quick. Menu, customize. Um, I did want to show one other thing. Um, and this is in the instructions as well. But make sure that you um, set, let's see, it's under you know, saving and printing tab. We want to make sure that, that this is actually set for PNG. Quick save. That's what our report needs. I usually set both of these to PNG. I don't think it matters, but that's the format our report needs to get the picture of the ultrasound, and that's that's in instructions as well. So make sure that's done. So as far as um, training the physician, the things they're going to need to know, you want to make it look as easy as possible. Obviously, just like the reps are doing during the demos. Um, so don't don't get too lost in the settings. Try to make it look and feel easy for them. Um, sometimes you want to show them how to get to things. But getting into too much detail um, will sometimes confuse them more than help them. So if you guys, you know, know that in training. So I'm in. The first thing you need to understand is the modes are across the top. Okay, so these are the modes. F1 really through F6 are the different modes that you're in. I have a smartest plugged in right now. I'll plug in a micro so you guys would like, just so you can see what modes aren't available. But I can tell you as well. So in the smartest. F1 through 6, all these modes are available except for F4. Um, and I don't even know what F4 does because you can't tell, but it's not available in the smartest. It is available, or, and it's not available in the micros as well. So in the smartest, F1, you have the B mode. F2 is M line, and then when you push it a second time, it'll go to B mode plus M mode. We'll go over that. F3 is your dual display, and you have either dual mode or you can do quad mode. We'll go over that. Um, F5 is your Doppler, and you can have power Doppler or um, flow. And then F6 is your B plus pulse, um, pulsed wave mode, is what that's called. And we can go over that. For the most part, most people are going to use B mode and maybe Doppler, and, and definitely dual mode to take pictures of different parts of the nerve. Um, so this is how you go from mode to mode. Not to be confused with the buttons at the bottom, these are how you decide what control bars are shown on the on the side panel here. And so the what I have here is the B mode control bar. That's what's showing here. You can also see here, this is showing the B mode control bar. If I click here, I can change it to the time gain controls. That changes my control bar. If I look at this icon now down here, I can see there's time gain controls here as well. So there's a couple different ways to change that toolbar. So one takes me back to my B mode controls. I can jump to time gain controls. Um, these are my Doppler controls. I can't get into Doppler controls unless I'm actually using Doppler. Um, that's what pulsed with. So some of these, if, if they're not, not allowing you to go to them, it's because you're not in that mode up here yet. So just understand that these are how you switch modes. These are how you switch the controls for those modes. The reason why that is there is because you may be in Doppler mode, but you want to switch your B mode window. Or you may want to, you may be in a different mode and want to go to presets. So the 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 controls across the bottom, the import, most important ones, B mode, because you'll always need to use that if you need to jump back to this mode. Um, time gain controls are important. Um, the palette, they won't go into it very much, but it is important to, to know what it is. And then the, the presets, the star is your presets, and that's how you can set up different presets for them. Okay. So just as far as navigating through the screen, you're showing them that the, the modes are across the top. The control bar panels are across the bottom, and then the controls or the settings for the image are on the left-hand side, 
and measurements and annotations are on the right hand side. If you're using this in regular ultrasound mode with the summit, we're using the knobs to control the most commonly changed settings. So hopefully most um, physicians won't need to mess with any of this, but the knobs, unless they're going to, into Doppler mode or something, but hopefully between the presets and the knobs, they should be able to do everything that they want to do without getting too deep into the different settings that are optional. Um, I'm going to take you through, and I actually recorded a training video that I shared with you. It's about 20 minutes long, and it's specific on different settings and how to change settings and what settings do what to the image. Um, so watch that. It's, it's not too long, and it's specific to that. So I don't know. If you guys want me to, I can go into detail on this as well. Uh, that's up to you guys, but that is a separate video that I made just specific to go over what the different settings do um, and how to do how to change the different settings. So I'm going to I'm going to go over some of this here because this is what you're going to train the physician on. Um, in B mode settings, which I'm in here, in panel one, there's three panels. Okay, these are the most commonly changed modes or commonly changed settings, and and also the settings that you can change with the knobs. Um, so focus is these, these arrows, these focal points. I have two focal points turned on. I can change that in another setting I'll show you later. But this is how I adjust where those focal points are. So either by turning my yellow knob um, when focus is selected down here, or by clicking this arrow back and forth, I can change those focal points. You want to focus on the structures you're looking at. So if you're looking at a nerve that's close to the surface, you want to move those focal points up higher towards the surface of the ultrasound. Up here, this is your skin. If you're if the ultrasound is sitting on the skin, this is the width of the ultrasound across here. So right now I have the smartest with a 15 megahertz probe plugged in. This is 40 millimeters represented across here. And then this depth is whatever you have it set for. So that's your focal points. Depth is set right now for 20 millimeters. That's telling me from here to here, I'm seeing 20 millimeters or two centimeters of depth. If I change that, you'll see that image change. And now I'm seeing 30, 30 centimeters. Obviously, it's getting smaller because I'm, I need to be able to see deeper. So depth is another way to zoom in. If, if they say I want to zoom in, before you zoom in, first increase depth if you can. Um, that's going to be a better way to zoom than just doing a, a regular zoom, which is up here at F7. So, yeah. In your in those other training videos you talked about, are you actually um, doing an ultrasound? Um, I walking through it. Some of them I am, some of them aren't. On the settings one, I have it showing the ultrasound image and it's showing what the different and you can see what the different settings do to the image. Okay. Um, so For that me, that one might, you, you might be a little more clear if I, I saw me, but I can't hear yeah. you guys anymore. So. You can't. You can't hear me. And again, Rob, you're saying you can't hear me. Okay, I hear you now. Okay. Let me know I, if I cut I out was, again. My, my I was going to say I think this might be a little more clear for me if I saw, you know, what what it does when you're changing that focus on an actual ultrasound here. Yeah. Well, let's just do that. I've got an ultrasound here. Okay. So. Goo. You use a lot of goo when you do ultrasound. Abe, do you it's find that this is going to be more more geared toward peripheral nerves and and maybe uh, necks and things like that, like to look in you know in in between the does it look as deep into the foramenal spaces and things like that to see. You know, it, people are going to use it. Yeah, I don't want to assume how they're going to use it because they're buying an ultrasound. So they may, you know, you're going to have some guys that are, are going to be using it for MSK. Some guys are going to be using it to look at nerves. Some guys will be using it to look at carotids, you know, using Doppler. Um, it's because it's capable of all those things, and that's what they're doing now with their ultrasound. Um, so right. different physicians are going to use it in different ways. So we're not doing any clinical training so we should just be able to show them how to get into the different modes depending on what they want to use and then how to um you know adjust the image for what they're seeing right but does it that help answer your question does the, 
does it does it help us as a professional to learn this stuff and to be able to bring something to the table and say, hey, by the way, you could use it for this to complement those other things that you'd like to do, maybe as a selling yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, or, yeah, for sure. The more you know always helps, um, and we want to facilitate some of that training. But yeah, for yeah, sure. that drives me to another point. But so based on when you're out in the field and you're seeing this for the different di disorders, like the doctor I talked with at Louisville. He uses this a lot to look at fasciculations for ALS patients, and mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the, uh, what is it called, uh, artifact type factors and things like that, where you can actually see the fasciculation or the motor twitching or the muscle twitching. Yeah. Uh, if you had like a one page thing put together of the different things and, and some basic settings or, you know, key points to note for each of those type of things for us you know, yeah just one stop one page thing that'd be really handy i think yeah i, I agree um we're, we're also learning as we go because we're finding every physician that we talk to uses it for something a little bit different so we don't right. know all the per, all the uses right now but as we come across those things we definitely should be keeping track of those things and and sure. sharing that in, in both our marketing material and instructional material so I agree. Okay. Um, and if you guys ever come across something like that, shoot me an email and I will try to, that's something the sales reps want to obviously is, you know, typical uses. And I, I hear different ones every day. So some of them are sure. pretty obscure that most people won't use, um, but other ones are probably nice for everyone to know about. Mm -hmm. So what I'm looking at here is, I'm just gonna put my mouse here so you can see the mouse cursor. So if you look at that round structure of my median nerve, it's right into the mouse, okay? And this is where it gets tricky because I gotta figure out how to do this. Was that kind, was that kind of a slice, like a, a, a lateral slice or? Yep, yep, so we're doing it seeing a cross section. Okay. So I get on there. All right, that's not too bad. Um, and the way you know it's a median nerve is if you can follow up and down the arm, and we're not gonna get too much into clinical here um, for this training, but you can kind of tell, well, I'll do that one screen there. So it's, it, you can kind of tell a nerve because you can follow it. So see that, see that round structure there that's right under the mouse? That's the median nerve, and as I go up more towards the wrist, you can see it getting more shallow and up closer to the skin or the surface. As I come down, it gets deeper into my forearm. You see that? Mm -hmm. There's three round structures really typically that you're looking at. You're gonna see vessels or arteries, nerves, and tendons. Um, just real quick, a nerve is gonna keep its, its shape and keep its color more so than tendons and vessels. So what I mean by that, is if you see this nerve, median nerve there, and off to the right, there is the tendon, okay? So here's the nerve, here's the tendon. As I tilt my probe, the tendon will almost completely disappear where the nerve stays visible. So the nerve is a little bit more stable than the tendon. So that's one way to tell the difference between the two. Also knowing the anatomy is important. But that's, that's so you can tell the difference. The nerve also has a honeycomb shape and it usually keeps that honeycomb shape. Tilting the probe is gonna give you a better or worse picture because you're trying to get a perfect cross section. And it just how you tilt the probe is dependent on how much of those sound waves are reflected back into the probe. A vessel or artery, like the one at the top of the screen there, when you press it, it's going to close off. See how that closes up in the top middle of the screen, that round black artery? You can get, see it pulsating too. Nerves won't do that. Okay, so when you put pressure on a nerve, it may get closer to the surface because you're pushing down closer to it, but it's not going to change its shape. Okay, so that's a quick lesson on nerves, but there's all sorts of structures that people look at. Um, the other thing they'll want to do on a nerve is they'll want to rotate it so they can see that both in long axis. So right now I'm seeing a cross section of it because I have it across my, my arm. If I go um, parallel to my arm with the probe, and the way I want to do this is keep that nerve right in the center of the screen as I rotate. That way when I rotate, I'll be seeing, seeing now you can see a nice long axis. See that right where the mouse is? That's a long axis of the nerve. You can see the, the fascicles in there. You can see the sheath on either side. And I can spin the probe back and 
and I'm seeing a cross section of that nerve. Okay. So if you look at the um, focus, so as I go, I'm just going to take this off. So if I change the focus and move them out of the way, down, so the nerve's a little bit more blurry. And then if I move this focus up, these two arrows, up to where the nerve is, as long as the nerve's in that focal point, you're going to see it a little bit more clear or crisp. So you want those focal points somewhere near whatever structure you're looking at. Um, a lot of physicians, though, really don't take the time to move those. If they have a clear enough picture, they're not going to worry too much about making it perfectly clear. Um, they're just going to do their best to get an image. Depth. Again, if you watch the depth, if I change the, the depth, so here's 20 millimeters. So that, that nerve is going to look a lot bigger now because I'm only looking at two centimeters deep. So again, right in the center of the screen is my median nerve. And, but I'm only seeing two centimeters. So you can see there the nerve is about a centimeter down from the surface um, because it's right in the middle of the two centimeter screen. Whereas if I take that depth to, to you know, 40 or something, I'm still gonna be able to see that nerve. It actually may even look a little bit clearer um, because of you know, the resolution, but it's gonna be a lot smaller too. And now with that depth though, I can follow that nerve a lot deeper down as it goes down into the arm. Um, dynamic range is your grayscale, is how I would describe that to a physician, or your contrast. So as you adjust this, and actually we don't even need to be showing, I'm just going to put some gel on this probe so you can see some color in there. So as I change the dynamic range, see how that's changing, it's, it, it's, it's really the, the grays that I'm seeing, seeing more or less grays. So as I go down, I get some more contrast. And as I go up, I get a little bit more, I can see more. If you have too much contrast, you, you can only see the brightest parts of, the, of you know, the anatomy. Um, so you kind of want it somewhere where they can see all, where the structures stand out from each other, but they're all visible. And so I usually keep that, and this is in that instruction, uh, in, that, in the um, training folder for ultrasound that I shared with you, there is a paper that shows common settings or recommended settings as well as that video. And I, I go through the different settings on there. The dynamic range, I usually keep it somewhere in the low 50s up to 72. I usually don't go much higher than that because you get too many grades in there and you start losing definition. But again, that's up to the doctor. There's no right answer for this. Um, and then you have power and gain, okay? Power is how loud that probe is screaming, right? We're using sound waves there. So that's how I remember power is, is how loud you're screaming, the power of your voice. So that's, I usually keep that all the way up. Gain is your sensitivity of how you're listening. The gain I don't keep all the way up typically because it usually is too bright and you just see too much reflection. So the gain you're going to adjust usually somewhere between maybe, you know, 60, 60 up to 100, depending on what you're looking at and how bright you want it to be. So the, so the two, two modes I'll, I'll adjust the most is usually the gain is the most and then the dynamic range slightly just to get it into the right contrast that I want. Um, the power I don't adjust, the depth I don't adjust unless I need to, unless I'm changing to a, diff a different, deeper structure. And the focal points, it just depends on how clear you want the image. Um, and then the other, other setting that is, that is a knob setting, so I'm going over the settings that you can change with the knob here. Um, so the blue knob is your power gain, obviously. The purple knob, when you press it down, changes your frequency. The probe that we are selling with the smartest is a 7.5 to 15 megahertz probe. Same with the micros. Okay, so they both have the same frequency range. Um, the, the smartest probe is a little bit wider. The higher the frequency, the clearer the image at peripheral depths. The lower the frequency, the clearer image at deeper depths. So a lower frequency is going to penetrate further into the body. So 15 megahertz, the highest frequency, is usually pretty good for, for most peripheral nerves. But as they go, as you're looking at deeper nerves or it, it, on the legs or on a bigger pit patient, um, or maybe the diaphragm, which is common, that's when you want to go down to 12, 10, 7.5. And you can see, as you go down in frequency, how it gets brighter down deeper. So at 15, we can see the power is kind of up here. And as we go down, go the other way, 12, it gets a little bit brighter down deeper, 10 and 7.5. Now, if we look at a different depth, it'll make more sense. Now I'm at a 50 depth, or it's even go up to a 60 there. So this, this is six centimeters. 
and you can see at six centimeters, if you're at 15, you can't see much at all down deep, but as you lower that frequency, you'll see more detail deeper into the body. Okay? Um, angle is really only important for needles. <clears throat> if they're doing needle injections, um, this is nice, a nice feature because you want the needle to come in here, you know, kind of perpendicular to the probe. So you'd, you'd angle it this way and have the needle coming in so it, so it reflects right off the probe and comes back. And you can tell pretty, pretty easy once you get it in there how much of a difference it makes. It'll go from not being able to see the needle at all to really being visible in there when you have a needle in there. Um, so angle, and a physician will know why they would want to angle it, but um, for needle injections, that's the purpose of angling that probe, and it's just angling the image down. Go back to 15. Um, so that's our first tab. Change scan direction. This is important. On the probe, there's typically a symbol on one side or the other. Some probes have a symbol on either side, which is what the smartest has. <clears throat> this it, the easiest way to know what side's what is just tap the probe. See that? So I'm tapping the left side of the probe, so I know that probe is the left side of the screen. That's You just want to be able to um, know that. So on the smartest, there's a little notch on one side of the probe, and that notch corresponds with this little diamond. So I know that that, that notch is this side of the screen. Wherever I have that notch, I know that's the left-hand side of the screen. Um, so that's how change scan direction is going to reverse that. So if I have that checked, see the notch goes on the other side of the screen. Okay. All right. Second tab is where you can choose this is more granular stuff. You can choose how many focal points you want. So like I said, I have two selected here. You can go from one all the way up to seven, or it looks like even eight. Uh, the problem with this is the more focal points you have, the lower your your frames per second is on the imaging, and you're going to get a much poorer signal. So the recommendation is to keep the frame, the focus numbers, and this physician degree somewhere between you know one and two. You don't really need more than that, um, and that way you have a nice, clear, clean image and higher frames per second. Frame averaging, keep this somewhere in the two or three. This is how fast it averages. Um, and it's how many averages it's using. If you have a higher number, again, when you move the probe, it's gonna take longer for that image to stabilize. So if you keep it somewhere in two to three, you can move the probe relatively fast and be able to follow structures up and down. If you increase that average too much, um, it, it takes too long to re-average and it, the picture is not gonna look as good as you're moving. View area, keep it 100%. Rejection, doesn't, I usually keep it around eight for rejection. Um, and then image enhancement. This is your, um, this is, these are just algorithms of how to make this, the reflected sound waves um, better or look better. And so I have um, image enhancement. Keep this at method two or three. It seemed to be the best or most liked. Um, and then speckle reduction. This is where you can have either, so right now, let me just change my, which I'll show you in the scan what this does. So if I have a speck reduction, and I usually keep it at seven or eight of neat view or seven or eight of pure view. So if I look at neat view, um, you can get a pretty nice looking image and it's a little bit grainy, but it's detailed. You can see the fascicles and stuff in that nerve. Uh, let me turn my focus down a little bit. Okay. So there's that nerve, and I can kind of see the fascicles in there, um, right inside of the screen there. If I change this to smooth view, and this is just going to be preference of the physician, it may have like a GE system that makes everything look really smooth. It could just be because they're using a different algorithm here. So the smooth view, see how much smoother that makes things? So you can't see the nerve as well, but it's not as grainy. So from what I'm seeing so far, smooth view, people are more used to the smooth for um, maybe MSK stuff. They don't want it quite as grainy. They're looking at muscles or nerves, but you can see how that's just cha totally changes the image when you go from a pure view to a neat view. And it's not called smooth view, I'm sorry. 
So neat view gives you a little bit more granularity and smooth view really smoothens out the image more. Um, line density, keep it at standard. Negative, I don't know why you do negative here. It just reverses the, reverses the colors in your palette to give you a negative look to the ultrasound. Um, and the rotate image, I don't know why you need to do that, but you can do it. So those are your basic B modes. <clears throat> Again, when you're training someone, depending on the person you're talking to, you may just want to keep it really simple and say, hey, make sure you're always in the standard B mode and here's your presets, you know? And they can jump to a pre preset, you know, different depths. That changes the depth and all the, everything how they want it. And then they can tweak things as needed, increasing the gain, you know, whatever makes sense to them. So, so just kind of read the person you're training on how much you really want to show them um, and how granular you want to get into these settings. Because there's a lot here. Um, whether you want to show them everything or if you just want to show them how to get to things or show them nothing at all and just show them here's your presets and here's your knobs to change, you know, other things. <clears throat> the, I think sometimes you can overtrain, <laughs> as, as you guys know, and you can kind of tell by the person when you're losing them. Um, so if they're not really paying attention, um, just stop and change the focus on something else. Um, there's a lot of granularity into this software. You can really get into the weeds really quick. So you really just want to, yeah. Somebody was asking something. Yeah, I know. Okay. Um, so the main thing, this left panel are my settings. These buttons down at the bottom are the different types of settings I can change. <clears throat> the only other setting that's important that I, I really want to show you is the time gain controls. What that shows, I'm going to put some gel in here so you can see. <clears throat> What this is, is it allows me to change the gain through the depth of the whole picture. So here is the gain at 30 millimeters. Because I have the, the depth set for 30 millimeters, I can now granularly change the gain. So you can notice it's usually a lot brighter at the top, so you might want to turn that down a little bit. But at the bottom, you may need a little bit more, more gain to see structures down there. So this gives you complete control over every part of the picture um, to adjust the gain. And what you're looking for is you really just want to adjust this so it's a nice, even color throughout. So there's no, you know, so there's no sections that are really brighter than others or darker than others. Um, so the time, time gain controls, those will be set in our presets, but this is just something that is changed sometimes, especially if they're going really deep. So this is directly related to depth, obviously. So if I go back to my B mode and I change my depth to really high depth, here's 10 centimeters down, it's an extreme example. This is where, so at, at 10 centimeters, I may need a full gain to see down there all the way you know, and, you know, at five centimeters, maybe I don't care as much, or maybe I need that brighter as well. So again, at every depth, you kind of want this set up so you can see all the way down to the bottom. Okay. And usually it's going to be linear, something like that. So the, uh, <laughs> the number five, yeah, yeah. And so I'm just kind of thinking along as we go here, but most of these physicians that are going to buy this, they are skilled in this, right? Are we going to we ever so. have physicians that are we ever going to have physicians that see this and like it and expect us to give them some really in-depth, detailed training? Because I think clinical knowledge would definitely come in hands first with that. Because I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I'm paying attention here, but I'm a little spooked. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to see it all. You're going to, for sure. There's going to be doctors that buy this that don't know ultrasound because they've either already scheduled a training class or they're trying to get into it. So that's going to happen. Okay. Where you're, you're, and you're, and for them, you're just trying to make it as easy as possible to get a good image. Um, now, and like I think those EMG will be the easiest. There, like on EMG up in the help files, there, it's really nice. Uh, uh -huh. You can choose an example, and it will show like for EMG. You can choose a muscle, and it'll show you insertional point, activation, all kinds of things. Are we going to have yeah. something like that in the help files for the um, common it's, types of tests? Um, not right away. That's not on the docker. Not right. We're working on right away. That's a good okay. good recommendation. But when they buy this ultrasound in the install media, they get a free copy of Jeff Strakowski's book, which is electrodiagnostics and ultrasound. 
how to how to use ultrasound to improve your electrodiagnostics. So that's in the install disk. Uh, make sure you copy that to their desktop so they have it. Um, and that's part of the that's we're giving we bought licenses for everybody that buys ultrasound. We're giving them a license of that book, a, a digital license. Um, so that will be a good reference guide for them to go through. Okay. Um, and that's what I'd recommend. Again, we're not we're not offering clinical training, but you guys run into this all the time where they're wanting to you know. So the more knowledge you have, the better. Um, and we we're we're definitely working down that road of whether we want to offer our own courses, kind of like we do nerve conduction. Sure. Um, we may go down that road. So, can, can we, so for we a make part of the, can we make it part of the quoting process that when somebody orders this that we know that they're a skilled person versus somebody that's buying it and they're learning on the fly? Because I mean I think that'd be something um, at a time going in. Yeah, I, I, I mean I think that's something that the. Are you asking? I, I don't know how they could. Rob. Because I, I know like for, for Kaiser Permanente, you know, Parker, I, we talked to him about that and he gave us the heads up that uh, these docs are really just, they're just exploring ultrasound. They're not, they're not trained in it or anything like that. So if, if that's, some, that's something I can definitely be asking of the sales reps when we get these ultrasounds on the quotes is, you know, what okay. is the immediate expectation from the doctors? Sure. That'd be nice yeah, I think that's probably the best way to do that. It's just that that can be something that because I yeah sometimes that's information they know and sometimes it's not you know I've done sales where you don't even talk to the end user they just told the purchasing right. department what they wanted on the quote so you sometimes you're going in blind but usually with ultrasound because it's so new the the, the reps gonna have an idea of their knowledge level right. in ultrasound and I would think it's right. directly proportional to the so the the less the person knows it on ultrasound probably the more basic you want to make the training you know right um well, I mean, you want to make it really you know, I mean, simple bringing up these things here Abe, but uh, i'm going to learn this and, and i'll go as far as to get certified in it because i'm not one to, to I, w I don't want to look dumb out in the field uh yeah so i yeah. just want to reassure you I, so don't construe me asking these questions as pushback or anything because i'm going to learn this cool I'm, no I'm, I'm, I'm I, 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 I know going, so. i know we and we've all got to learn it. We're and we're going to try to support you in that. We're working on that, but we don't have anything. Um, I don't know if anything will happen before the sales meeting. I'm trying to for sure have something. Hopefully, we have some time to have someone at the sales meeting um, be there to do some hands-on training, have some systems set up. That's my goal. Um, okay. But yeah, we we want to get you guys as, as trained as possible, both clinically and on the instrumentation of ultrasound. Um, so, and 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 people that use ultrasound a lot doesn't mean they really want to know the software that well. So, for example, um, Dr. Walker, he he does you know ultrasound courses all over the place. He's very well known for ultrasound, and he could care less about what all these buttons and knobs do. <laughs> you know, he he wants to know how to change the gain, and that's all he cares about. And so, right. so really, um, even the doctors that know ultrasound really well may even know better that hey i just want a preset and that's what most of them are going to want they're going to want hey just give, make it easy for me give me a preset to get to the different structures that i like to look at um now re recognize you can set a preset for for doppler too so you may want a preset you know like this and it jumps them right into a doppler mode sure so i think more often than not what you're wanting to do with these doctors is set up a good list of presets for them and show them how to change the basic settings with the knobs and then maybe get into some of the taking pit, obviously get into taking pictures and measuring, um, but it, you're not gonna get too much into the weeds on a lot of these settings. They're not gonna understand them, um, but it's, it's important that you guys understand them so you can set up the presets appropriately, um, but it's not necessarily important for them to understand. Do you see any variability in the presets based on size? Would there be any, like uh, if you have certain presets, for a 90 pound person would it be different for like a 300 or 400 pound person um that's because why i like using the yeah absolutely that's why i like using um the depths rather than structures okay. so if you have a preset for like i have here superficial shallow medium and deep those presets mm -hmm. are going to be more more generic to you know just the depth right. versus what you're looking at um, because okay. you're right a median a median nerve on a on a patient 
given the patient could be anywhere from one centimeter deep to six centimeters deep, right? Right. Uh -huh. So, so that, and, and if it's deeper, you'd have to change not only the depth, but you'd have to increase the time gain controls. You'd have to ch probably increase the gain, increase the dynamic range, increase the, the, the frequency of the probe. All those things would have to be changed to make that image clearer down at that deeper depth. So that's why I'm, I'm recommending having the presets be based on depth versus structure. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so these are all the settings. Yeah. Hey, sorry to start to interrupt, man. Just, just a quick question. Nope. Um, the book you referenced, is that the introduction to muscular skeletal ultrasound getting started? Is that the same book? Um, no, or it's you, not. You, you have a different one. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's, a, it's a different book that he wrote, um, specific to more electrodiagnostics and ultrasound. Um, it's oh, a little bit bigger okay. book. You, and it's you, and it have, and all yeah, of you yeah, should have a PDF. Yeah, so it it should be on the Summit software in there. Oh, okay. um, so if so, if you get that software, it should be on there hidden. We're now it's hidden in there. It's it's not. I mean, we're just giving we're we're not giving it away free to everyone. It's specifically for people that buy our ultrasound. So don't give copies away to anyone and everyone. It's it's kind of when they buy the ultrasound, they get a digital copy of that book. Um, obviously, you guys should all have it, but if you have the software, um, it should be in there. If not, uh, I'll find it and just let me know, and I'll I'll share it with you. Thank you. Um, so settings, again, you can kind of go through. I wanted to show you those basic B mode settings um, because, and they're in that other training video as well, and it's just specific on settings, just so you know how to set up presets, because that's I think what you're going to mostly be doing is setting up maybe setting up presets and then showing them how to use those presets, how to control things with the knobs, and then how to take pictures and store them into the reports, okay? Um, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this left panel. Um, now I'm gonna go over to some of the other panels. One thing to remember though is if you want to, just so you know, the arrow keys um, go up and down those buttons and then the up and down arrow keys and then the left right change one specific setting so another way to change settings quickly is just using the arrow keys on your keyboard you can go up and down to a different setting and left right and i actually like that in some instances i use that as much or more than the knobs just because it's everything's in one place um you know if i'm especially if i'm doing stuff one-handed um, it's, it's useful to know that um, the f keys control the functions in the top of the screen the number keys control the functions on the bottom of the screen. Um, everything, all the annotations and measurements you need to do with the mouse, okay? Um, so while we're in B mode here, I'm gonna do a couple things. Um, first off, I'm gonna take a picture of something, okay? So I wanna get a nice nice picture of my median nerve here, okay? So let's say I like that picture right here. What's nice about this is just like in EMG, um, I can stop it and I can review back, okay? So with that yellow knob, if I, or with the run stop button on the base unit, I can hit that and I can stop and then I can run with the yellow knob. Or if I look at this, this green little window in the bottom right hand corner is actually my buffer. So you can either use the yellow knob to now roll back or you can drag through the buffer, okay? So this is a nice feature to show the physicians when you're trying to make it look easy is you, you're scanning something, you find something you like to see, you don't have to stop it right on that image because as soon as you pause, you can always roll back that yellow knob and find the best image, okay? And there it is, and then you're just gonna hit store on the base unit, um, or the save button down here does the same thing, down at the bottom, and that's gonna that, that, store the image. Is it, like, is it like recording live, Abe, and then you can just roll back the yellow knob to see what you had just saw? Mm -hmm. Yep, so it's, it, 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 yep, exactly. It's just like an EMG, how we're recording a buffer, so you can always pause and review back. You can do the same thing with ultrasound, so, so it's all. What's that? Is it basically like a DVR or... that it's always recording and then you can rewind? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Cool. So if, I, if I'm running, so here I'm running, if you look down here, see it recording in the bottom right corner? Yeah. That's my buffer recording. It's going to be constantly recording over itself. So at any time I can pause it. Let me get an image on there. So any time I can pause it and then go back and find the best image to take a picture of. 
Oh, nice. Okay. And then I can hit store to store that image. Now, is, if is, they want to store the video, buffer? never mind. If they want to store the video, just like an EMG, how they can store either the buffer or they can store the uh, a snapshot. Um, if they want to store the video, th this save button down here, they drop down and do a Cine quick save. Okay. Cine saves at, save as allows them to store a video somewhere else. Cine quick save saves it right into the exam. If it's saved, it defaults to TVD. TVD is a video that can only be played within the telemed software. I don't know that. Actually, let's just look at that really quick. Um, I'm going to go to customize, and let's just see. I'm not sure if I can change those formats on the. Let's see. Here it is. So quick save. See the quick save format. So okay. So this is pretty cool. So you can change it to um, an ABI. You know. And so here you have multiple image savings. Yeah, so you, you have total control. So you can change that to an ABI, which is a video file that can be played outside of telemed software. TVD is a telemed or the, you know, an echo, echo wave or whatever um, file that can only be played within this software. Um, so it's set to, for TVD, meaning I, I can play it back when I'm in the summit. Um, if you go, I'm assuming if I go in here, save, and Cine save as, this is where it gives me, I can save it anywhere I want. This, this would be how they'd export it, right? If a doctor wants to export it for a PowerPoint presentation, um, that's what they do. So it's really simple. They go down to the disk, they drop down next to it. Cine save as, it's gonna save the video I just took or the, the buffer is what it is. Save it in whatever folder you want. And then I can save the image type as AVI. And now it, they'll be able to play that back on any computer. Okay. Um, I really like this software. It's pretty intuitive as you spend some time with it. And once you guys get a chance to have some hands-on um, with these devices, you can see that it's pretty intuitive to get around. And that's the feedback we've had from a lot of physicians too, is they, they, they feel like they, they're, it's pretty easy to figure out. Um, so that's storing. A very important thing you wanna show them is how to stop, how to save the picture. They can't bill for this unless they have the image saved. The other way they're gonna save is they're gonna do a comparison, okay? And so in a comparison, so I'm going to go back into record. And just so you guys all know the different ways to stop, you can, space, you can hit the run stop in the base unit, space bar pauses it, or right click also pauses it and then unpauses it. Okay, so there's three different ways to, to stop, run and stop the uh, scanning. So if this blue diamond is on blue, it means it's scanning live right now. One nice trick is let's say I'm running and I want to measure my median nerve. So there's a nice image of my median nerve there. Okay, and I want to store that, but I actually want to compare that part of the nerve with another part of the nerve. That's where we're going to do the F3, the split screen. Okay, so what you can do is if you just hit F3 right now, it will save this and split the screen. Okay, I can't do that because I don't have enough hands to do that. <clears throat> so, but if I hit F3, either on the keyboard or in the summit base unit, it jumps right into this mode, and that image would already be saved on one of those panels. So that, this is this is a really cool way to compare the two different locations of that same nerve. So here I've got a nice image of that. So I'm going to pause that and go back and find a nice image of it. And let's say that's like, okay. So there's my median nerve there, and I'm going to right click on the other window. So now that activated this second window, and I'm going to find that same nerve. I'm going to find it up into up near my wrist. Pretty good right there. You guys aren't seeing what I'm seeing, but I'm going to point it out to you here. Oops, sorry. Find that again. Oh, sorry. Hold on. I got lost here. All right. Let me scan that again. I'm going to get a picture of my median nerve up closer to the carpal tunnel outlet. And I can show you what I mean by that. So 
So this is it here. See that? It's not always the same color in different structures because it's all based on where that's recording. Now, if I want to get a better picture down here, I can now right click on, on this screen and see if I can get a better picture down in my forearm of that nerve. But I just want to see the, the side walls a little bit more crisp. It's pretty good. So this is what I want to really show that it's easy to do for the physician, okay? Because this is what they're going to want to do so they can print this out. So here, not bad, it's all right. So here's the nice picture of that, ner that nerve, and here's a nice picture of that nerve, and I want to compare those two. So I'm going to go over to my measurement panel over here. Again, this icon shows me which panel I'm looking at. I'm in measurements. I can go to annotations. Those are the ones that they'll, they'll use most often. So I'm going to go to measurement, and I'm going to go to AB ratio because I want a ratio of this and this. Okay. If I just want to see a measurement, I just choose this area. But I'm going to come here to ratio. <clears throat> I like these set for trace versus an ellipse because the, the nerve isn't always round. So that's why I want to use a trace. I usually want to set this for area versus circumference. And now I'm in this mode. All I have to do is come over here, and I'm going to select and measure. So you're just going to measure around the circle. With your mouse, you click one time, and then you start drawing the box. You kind of let your imagination <laughs> decide where that nerve is. Okay, so there's my median nerve. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And I can see that the median nerve, this is right where it goes to the carpal tunnel. And you can see where it's a little bit flatter, which is normal. What they're looking for is a ratio difference here. There's also normative data just for typical measurement of the nerve of what it should be. But I think the ratio they're looking for is they want it to be within 25% of each other. And you typically want the, the um, two divided by one. Um, if this is bigger, then that's a problem because it, what that means is if you have swelling in the wrist, that means the nerve is being entrapped um, and it's it's swollen up because of that entrapped and they probably have carpal tunnel. So typically, if you're looking at a ratio of bigger than 25%, um, that they're significant for carpal tunnel. Okay. So that's how I did ratios. Now with the measurement tools, it's pretty, again, pretty intuitive. It comes through here. I can do delete all, okay? Or I can do, do delete selected. So let's say I want to remeasure one. I can use this arrow, which allows me to come and select this guy. Then I'm going to delete selected. And then I'm going to come and do another measurement of that one, okay? Yeah, I thought I wasn't quite accurate on where the nerve is. I'm going to come up. Okay. And, or I can do delete all and measure both of them. Okay, so here I have, I'm in the dual mode. I've got two images of that nerve in different places. Maybe they do side to side. Maybe they do, um, most people will do like a forearm to wrist, but they may do side to side as well to compare. Um, they can do a quad mode. I'll show you that in a second. But now this is the image they're going to print out on the report. So they may want to do annotations. Actually, before I do, notice my ratio is not showing up here. That's because these guys are blank for some reason. So I'm going to go and I want, I want to tell it, I want to compare the second, the third, and finish, and now I have a ratio, okay? So this is probably a better measurement. It's showing that there's not much difference in size, even though this is a little bit flatter here. There's not much difference in size of that nerve, so I don't really probably have carpal tunnel. Um, now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna annotate this so it looks good in my image. So I'm gonna change this mode to annotations. And you can have presets here. And that all you do to preset it is type it in here, add, and then you can save it. So I have a median in there. I have an ulnar in there. Maybe I want radial. Oops. Okay. So I edited that and made it radial. So if this is my median nerve, all I do is select median, and then click over there, and that puts it in there. Okay. And I can select it, select it again, and put it here. Oh, I, I hadn't selected it there yet. So put it in there, click somewhere else so it actually enters in there. And now maybe I want an arrow. So I can do an arrow pointing to the nerve. Um, I can do the line, line style. You know, maybe I want an arrow here. All right. Maybe you want to circle a structure or, or make them notice the shape of the structure. You can use a curve line. Here's line thickness. So all this stuff is pretty pretty basic stuff, okay? So we can draw with a curved line, we can do text, we can do a label, we can do an arrow. 
Um, all right, any questions on measurements or annotations? This is why I um, don't worry about these sites here because I think for printing out, they're going to want these. They're going to want this labeled right on the picture versus somewhere else. So they want it to be obvious that this structure, because they may have a picture where they're showing the median nerve and then something else labeled. You know, maybe it's <laughs> maybe they can see median and ulnar nerve in the same image. And so they want to they want to show which what is what. That makes sense. Um, so that's how I annotate and measure things. In here, there's calculations in here. Um, I mean, you, you'll notice this software is designed for all sorts of ultrasound, from gynecology to vascular, you know. And so there's going to be modes in here that you never use. Um, sometime in the future, it'd be nice if we could turn off some of those modes, to simplify some of these menus. Um, but you'll notice it over here in this section is where we add any annota annotations for, for that particular image. Now that I have it like this, I can go ahead and store that. And that will store just like that on my report. However, I have it annotated. And now I'm going to go back into B mode and continue my scanning. Okay. Um, and go back to dual mode now just to show that you can do a quad mode. Okay. So now I can actually measure four structures and compare four structures with each other. I think it's unlikely they'll do that very often because they're going to be pretty small pictures. Um, so I'd keep that in dual mode. So this is um, just typical scanning and measuring and marking ultrasound. And then we've gone over how to store an image, how to store a video. Um, so that's, that's, and if you're doing a Micris, that's all you're gonna show. Cause Micris, that's really all you're doing is you have, um, you know, your basic B mode, black and white, and you do have the dual mode to compare and you can measure and you can annotate. And that's probably mostly what they'll be using it for. There is one mode that both of them have, which is called the M mode. I wanna go over that really quick. So anytime you want to switch modes, you have to go back to B mode, start in B mode, and then switch modes to another mode. So I'm in B mode. I'm going to now switch to F2, which is M line. This gets me ready for M mode. This gives me a line here. Okay, I can move this line to any position I want. Um, this is my line position here, so I can move that left or right. What this line is going to do is show move, a sweep of movement that occurs over that line. So if it's a fibrillating muscle, if it's a vascular um, activity or blood flow, um, whatever movement occurs, they're going to use this mode to see that. And so I think um, Rob said one physician uses this to look at fibrillating muscles. This may be the mode they use. I'm not sure. Um, so with B mode, I, I clicked F2 the first time, which brought up this line. And I, that way I can get the line over over whatever muscle I want to see. Okay. I just have this over my like APB right now. And then I can click again a second time. And now I'm getting a sweep. That's a sweep of movement across this blue line. So I'm seeing the B mode in the top of the screen, and this is called M mode in the, in the bottom of the screen. So as I put that on, this is going to show movement. So if I have a nice relaxed muscle, this is what I'm going to see. And if I'm seeing fibrillations, you're going to see stuff like that. Okay? So you can see there's, it's useful. Um, this mode, I've seen it used for phrenic nerves. Uh, so they're doing a phrenic stimulation where they stim up by your neck, and they're just looking for a hiccup response in your diaphragm. And so they can put, they can scan the diaphragm here and then simulate your neck and see if your di diaphragm is reacting. Sometimes that's really hard to get um, that response because it's hard to know where to put the electrodes. Um, so this is just an example of what this could be used for. Um, a lot of people aren't using it for that, but you know, that's just one example. So this is called B mode and it, or, I'm sorry, it's called M mode and the top of the screen there is B mode with an M line and then the bottom of the screen is M mode which is picking up a sweep of movement. In M mode, you have control of the line position of the sweep speed. So here we're seeing 2.12 um, seconds of sweep. We can increase that or slow that down. Okay, 2.12 is the, 2 is the, the um, slowest. You have gain controls, uh, rejection, you know, everything else. So that is B mode. That is available in both the Micris and the Smartest. <clears throat> um, now we're going to go into Doppler. So I'm going to go back to B mode. I'm going to go to F5, which is my Doppler. This yellow box is where the Doppler is going to be picking up. A single click in the yellow box, move the box where you want it, and then click again. That repositions the box. You can make that box as big as sm or as small as you want it. 
Um, there's also an angle for that box if they want to see, because sometimes you can see different, again, we're talking about reflection, so you can see things differently at a better or a different angle. So you can angle that box. That's the angle of the Doppler coming out of the probe, what we're seeing here. So this is the Doppler coming out of the probe. So with Doppler on, I can now come up and select a drop down and select whether I want color flow or power. BPDI is just another mode of power Doppler. Um, it's, they're both very similar. So I would just, you know, usually you're going to switch between one or the other. Um, color flow is going to give you a blue and white picture. So let me see if I can, let me find an artery there. Okay, so you can see the flow, or I'm sorry, red and blue. So color flow is giving you the direction of the flow. So the way I, I've been taught to remember this is BART, means blue away, red towards. So if, it, if it's red, it's coming towards the probe. If it's blue, it's going away from the probe. So you're seeing, and, and typically you're going to see blood flowing both ways through a vein. Okay. So that is power Doppler. Obviously, you can see that artery in a cross section, or we can rotate. Let's see if I can do it and see a long view of that artery. Okay. I'm going to now switch my mode to power mode, and this is a cross section. Most people like power mode, it's a little bit more sensitive. Um, I can say cross section, and then again, I can rotate. Lost it there. Remember, you're just looking at like a little razor blade cut, so you gotta be right on top of that thing. Come back to find it again. Now, the sensitivity, see how it's lighting up quite a bit there. I may want to change my sensitivity down to my gain. If I push in, yeah. And then you can rotate that to the side. There you see the blood flow through that vein. And like I said, you can adjust the size of this box, bigger or smaller as needed. That is Doppler mode, pretty simple. Okay, so you have Doppler and you have color flow Doppler and power Doppler. Doppler will be used commonly, so you wanna show people how to switch to that mode, how to choose between color flow and power, um, and then how to adjust the gains and the position of the, of the window. That's pretty much all you need to know for Doppler. Um, if you have a Doppler on, you can go into any of any of the other modes. Um, not any of the other modes. So here, so we have Doppler, and here the next mode I want to show you, these two are only in smartest, is pulse wave mode. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you pulse wave mode with and without Doppler, because you can do either one. So if I'm in B mode, I can go in pulse wave mode. I don't know how often people are going to use this, to be honest with you. Um, this is more for vascular studies, but some people are starting to experiment using this um, for other things as well. But just know we have it, it's here. What you're seeing, this, this is similar to M mode, but you can actually see a specific part of the screen, a sweep over a section of the screen. So wherever I click my mouse, that's the section of the screen between here and here, that I can change the direction that, it, that it's sensing the flow or the sweep. So now if I put that over, so there I can really see flow. But the other thing you can measure, if you're scanning a muscle and you stimulate that muscle, you can pause and you can measure like a rep, rep stim, and you can actually get a measurement between when that muscle was stimulated and relaxed and re-stimmed, or you can measure silent period. So, so pulsed wave mode gives you a little bit more functionality than M mode. Um, you're more exact in the point you're looking at. Uh, you can see blood flow, you can measure volume. Uh, most of our customers aren't gonna be doing any of that. Um, but just to be aware, we have it. I'm gonna go back to B mode. Now I'm gonna go to Doppler and I'm gonna to go to F6, which is pulse wave mode. And you can see that I can use Doppler now within pulse wave mode. Okay, I need to change my sensitivity so it lights up a little bit better, but you get the idea, all right? So that is pulse wave mode. It is audio as well. Unlike M mode, you're getting audio. 
so you can actually hear the audio. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. So those are the different modes yeah. available. Um, you, you could hear that? Yeah, I could hear it, yeah. Okay, so, so just quick review for the smartest, you have the B mode, you have the M line and the M mode, you have the dual mode or the quad mode, depending on what you select. Um, in, and then for the smartest, you also get the Doppler and the pulse wave mode. Okay. Um, on the Micris, um, everything else is the same that we've gone over. Okay. If you guys want me to, I can plug one in and show you. Um, but really, as far as functionality, nothing changes. When you're talking about presets, those presets are specific to the probe and the, bo and the beam former. So in ultrasound, um, you have three pieces to the ultrasound, well, four pieces, depending on which one. You have the beam former, which is the box. You have the transducer probe, which is the probe. You have the power for the smartest, and then you have the USB cable. In the Micros, it doesn't need power, it's just a USB cable. If it comes with power, ignore the power, it powers off USB, um, so don't worry about the power for the Micros. When you change a preset, that preset is dependent on the specific beamformer, whether you're using Micros or Smartest, and the specific probe. So if you had set a, a, a preset for a 15 megahertz probe in the Smartest, and they switch probes to the 18 or the five megahertz, that preset will no longer be available. So, you, so if you are in-servicing someone that has multiple probes, at this point, the only ones they can buy are the, the one that comes with it and then a convex probe, which is a two to five megahertz probe. So if you're setting up presets, make sure you plug in both probes and um, set up presets for each probe. Uh, again, we'll have, we'll have presets for you for those. I, I won't have presets for the convex probe until I get one, but for the 15 megahertz probe in the, in the smartest and for the 15 megahertz probe in the Micros, um, there'll be presets already preset in there, but just remember those presets follow the probe. Um, so that so we've gone over what I would typically show people. I think we've gone over, which is measurements, um, modes, I'm sorry, settings, modes, measurements, and then the setting panels. Um, I'll, I'm going to go into just, just review a couple of these things that I, I think I left out. Going back to the settings panel, this is your palette. Um, this little box here and as you change that from one to two to different palettes you get it's your colors okay um, and they're preset colors if I go down here to this little number five or number six key this is actually a way to granularly change the palette the brightness the contrast and the colors okay but I would never get, get into there because it's just again you're getting too granular into the settings so just stay in your regular B mode and if they want a different color scheme just have them change this. You'll notice there's a big difference in brightness between even mode one. I'll put some gel in here so you guys can see. So if you look at even mode one and mode two, there's a big difference in brightness because it's using more whites. So if they're complaining about um, it being not bright enough, and you have the gain as high as you go, you got, you can, and your time gain controls as high as you can, just increase this palette back to one, and that'll brighten it. I usually set the presets using two. And then as you go the other way, it gets darker, but also as you keep going, you're gonna, if you're using a Smartest anyway, you'll actually get other colored palettes, okay? So maybe somebody, is, so this is nice to show them because maybe there's certain structures that, that, that are easier to see with these different color palettes. So rather than messing with the number six palettes, just show them it's easily, uh, it's a lot easier to switch through different palettes just using this little box here. Again, two should be kind of the standard. One will give you a little bit brighter. And then as you go down through the numbers, it's just going to give you different palettes of color. Okay. Um, this little star down here is just run stop. So it's just a fourth way to run stop. Clicking on it, pauses, and starts again. Um, going through here, this little box here is patient information. If you're running it within the summit, it's not really necessary to go in here. Um, because the, the, the data is saved within the summit, but you do have patient information here. You have your um, movie mode. We went over this. Um, this is just, you know, opening an image that you've saved somewhere else. That's all that is. Um, we're using the summit report, so you can use our, their report if you want to, um, or you can use the images in summit report. Um, image quick print. This is kind of nice if you just want to print out an image. Um, you could do an image print preview or print. 
and just print that image out as you as you're seeing it then um, email obviously that had to be set up to a mail server to use that across the top the ones we haven't gone over yet f7 is zoom okay so that gives us the zoom toolbar over here and now I can zoom in on this section so I can zoom in I can go down or up so I zoom in let me get in okay and then default takes you back to 100 so that's your zoom controls good I want to make sure so if you it looks like if you if you're in zoom and you draw a box it's going to zoom in around that box okay which is good that's kind of the functionality you'd expect it to do and then default over here zooms back out so if they're in if they want to zoom in on any, any structure they would just hit f7 to go into zoom and then they can just click and drag a box around what they want to zoom in on and then it would zoom in on that and they could take a snapshot of that and then go back out to default that zoom um, and then the rest of these modes from here on over are your different modes for your measurement tool toolbar or annotation toolbar that we went over already um, CNA this movie thing when you go into that what it does is it gives you different clips so it actually you can see different snapshots across the bottom um, of those different images and I I'm sure there's um, over time you you know we'll, we'll find out better uses for this but if somebody's looking for those um, you know they can quickly scan through their different images that they took through there and that's what the CNA does here um, I believe this is yeah your toolbar over here when so when you're playing back you have play pause um, record stop but uh, again I don't see a big use for that because you always have the buffer running and I showed you guys how to store the buffer and review through the buffer so going into that mode I don't know what it really gives you um, then you have your menu f12 it's called an automatic adjustment I have yet to see it improve the picture but the idea is if you're looking at an image and you use that automatic adjustment let's just try it it's supposed to make that image look better it takes a second see that and that's typically what I see is it usually makes it look darker but not any better so um, as I learned more about that button I haven't found a way to adjust what it does um, but I wouldn't suggest using it um, and it's really optimization is what it's supposed to be doing there menu is how you can come in and again get into all your settings um, you have a paint you actually have a whole full paint little scheme so you can take a picture and paint it's getting a little again too granular into the settings um, but these are all your settings menu customize that's how you do all your settings in, in ultrasound um, other than other than that um, in having I don't think I did any snapshots okay so there's a picture so that's that's probably what you need to go through with ultrasound um, familiar familiarizing them with the, the software there's nothing to the hardware really the smartest has a lock on it where you put the probe in you'll see that um, the probe has to be locked in for it to be activated the micros is just plug and play um, you can always see up here and up here which probe they're using which probes plugged in um, if nothing's plugged in it would just show it would save no probe over there um, but so for an in-service I think we've gone over most of the things you want to show probably overkill I don't think you'd really go into to this much detail um, but you do want to familiarize yourself with all the different settings so that you can set up presets for them um, get used to the different modes and how to adjust settings in those modes get used to the different buttons how to change these buttons over here so when I click presets I'm in the preset modes if I'm in the B mode settings um, Doppler settings you know time gain control settings just accustom yourself to what those do um, so that you can set up presets quickly for them hopefully most people will be happy with the presets that we come that we provide um, but if not you'll definitely want to be able to set up some presets physicians aren't used to I want to emphasize this having to mess with with um, too many settings they're used to clicking a button and then maybe adjusting the brightness or the gain um, 
they don't like the idea, at least in you know, the way they're using their GEs and sonocytes, is spending too much time making the image perfect. They just want to hit a preset, get an image, take a picture, make it quick and fast. Um, so from here, we want to make sure that when they print out a report, that image gets in the report. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go into a nerve here, so out of the ultrasound. Um, so I don't know if I set up my reports yet. I'm going to assume I haven't. So I'm going to go ahead and go to File, Launch Quick Report, and select Template. And so it looks like I do have some reports in here. I have ultrasound images. So if they want images in their report, it's just a matter of opening the report. So let's say in our tab data with traces, we want to add images. So I'm just going to right click and edit that. And then I'm going to find my ultrasound. And I have all ultrasound images and ultrasound image labels. Okay. I right click and edit that. This is just giving me a label. So it's really nothing. So really the only only token I have in my reports is ultrasound images. Now you can right click and edit this. You will want to do this because you want to decide how big they want their images. Okay. I personally think you want to stay with medium or large, depending on the doctor, because um, they're used to be, they want to see something there. So I'm just going to add ultrasound images to this report. Just put it down here after the waveforms. Let's just put it before the waveforms. Okay. And then we'll put this label above it. And I'm going to save that. I save that in tab data with traces. And that's all there is to it. So now I've now it's set up. So now when I open that tab data with traces, it should have my ultrasound image set in there. There it is. So that's a medium sized image. So you can see you can fit probably six per page. Um, the large size gets it a little bit bigger. Um, I'll show you the large, let's just go in there. I'll show you the large size. You can copy that token and create two different tokens for different reports. You may want one report with large images and another report with small images. Just create two tokens with that. Um, copy it, call it something different, and in one token have it set for large and small. So there's a large image. <clears throat> so you can see here, it does show you the label right superficial. So that's the upside of having structures. But again, like I explained, um, Maybe they want to use the labels just to get into the ultrasound software, like median, so it's labeled here. And then they use the presets within the ultrasound software to jump between presets. That's pro That may be the preference. And that's probably what I would show them. Um, so maybe if they do want to have structures set up in their, in their table, over in their study table, you know, median, owner, at least that way it will label the picture accordingly. Um, and then within the picture, you'd also have images as well. So that is your ultrasound. Um, that's all I can think of right now to go over with you guys. Um, that's most of what I know. Hopefully I'll learn more from you guys as, as we go through this. Um, looks like we've gone an hour and a half, so we're doing pretty good. So do you guys have any questions, anything that you'd like me to go back over, um, anything I missed, anything you want more detail on? Hey, um you you mentioned the uh the book and i was uh i was looking in maybe it's just in my summit um uh software disk uh i don't i don't see it um maybe i'm not not seeing it but, uh, did your did, did your software disk come from production do you know uh I, i'm not i'm not 
Yeah, sure. It's 3.0 software. Uh, it's the flash drive. Okay, and, and, and it, it's a flash drive that says Sierra 3.0 on it? Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't have that. I don't have one from production. That they are supposed to be putting them in there. I don't, I don't, my software didn't come from production, so I don't think I'm going to have it in here. But I would think it's either going to be in um, the ultrasound folder or the documents yeah, folder. That's the, first, that's the first thing I looked uh, in ultrasound. And then I look in the documents document. folder. It's not in there. Okay. All right. I'll, um, I'll find where it's being saved. If it's, and if maybe they're not putting it in there, I'll double check on that. Um, but in the meantime, I'll find it and I'll share that with you guys so you guys all have a copy of it. Okay. Yeah, because I have the I have the one that he gave us at the service meeting, which I've actually found very helpful. But if he's got one specific to, um, yeah, so that one's a specific scanning one. This one's more specific to electrodiagnostics and using ultrasound within electrodiagnostics. Um, some of the cases so that it, it is a good one to go over for um, yeah so this one this one goes into like the basics of the instrumentation and stuff of that nature so it's very yeah. very helpful yeah. so it, but it sounds like what you have would be a good second read to follow this one yeah up. for sure yeah yep. it's not on taz um yeah it is it's somewhere in our network i just don't know where we're saving it at um it's but it's supposed to be oh. if it if it's a summit from the production um uh -huh. But yeah, it's it's somewhere on our network, but it's supposed to come with the software if it's coming from production. Okay. I did a PDF file. And they, they may have, yeah, they may have changed something. Um, let me see. Yeah, I'll find I'll find it and share it with. I'm sure it's on Google Drive somewhere, so I'll share it with you guys. Um, with everybody that's on this meeting, so you have a copy of it, and go from there. Um, is there anything else, either summit or ultrasound related, that you guys have questions on while while we're here? So, oh, hey, Abe, you mentioned that you were going to recommend that we get a micros at least sent out to all of us, or you said you'd be willing to. Is that still standing? Because I like I that's think my opinion. If we can't get a sm I, smartest right away. I'd at least like to have a micros. Yeah, my opinion, and that again, it's, this is a, a lot up to our inventory, and I don't make the decisions on who gets what demo equipment. That's, I think that's Jason. Um, but you can tell them what I think. I think that if you guys all have a summit, you ought to have at least a micros to go with it, um, so that you can be helping. You know, if you take a and ask them about it. Yeah. You know, if you're thinking yeah. they all should get a micros, which I agree, I'll go talk to Jason and see what we can do. Yeah, I just I just don't know how much inventory we have right now because I know even right now reps are sharing smartest. We don't have enough smartest inventory to really want to give all the he didn't want to give all the reps to smartest. Um, so I it may it may be that you know he only opens up a few to share around at this point. But if you guys are taking calls, you know you can't really troubleshoot with someone on a micros or on an ultrasound if you can't open the ultrasound software. And you need ultrasound hardware to be able to use the ultrasound software. So that's that's why I I, I think you guys should have it. Is it? Are, do we? Can we get? Can we get them? <laughs> that's what we're it's up ask. to Jason. Yeah, it's not oh, up to me. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll I'll ask Jason see what what his thoughts are, and I'll I'll email the group and keep you up to date. Um, Obviously, we're sending around the smartest right now, but yeah, you need something, especially if you're on the phone. You can't you can't be rotating one around. Yeah, I mean that's why you guys have a smartest or I mean, a summit right now, right? Is for phones. I'm assuming. Yeah, we do. Yeah, so that's why I mean that 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 would be my argument of why you would need a ultrasound because you can't really help somebody if they're having questions with their ultrasound. Um, if you can't open up the software, another thing too. You can open up. Let me let me clarify. You can open up the software, but you can't do anything in the software if your if your hardware is not connected to it. Right. Okay. Just having the hardware is very helpful as far as uh, you know learning the software as well. 
Um, you know, yeah. you, eventually you don't need it, but at the beginning, especially, it's real important to coordinate the two. You know, okay, yeah. I got the stem probe in my hand. Where do I need to go to click? Okay, I got the amplifier. Where do I need to go to adjust that? That sort of thing. Yeah. All right. We good? Yep. Thanks, Abe. Appreciate it, man. Yep. You bet. So I'm going to. I just stopped the. I didn't go into um, concurrent mode. Okay. So let me just really quickly go into concurrent mode. Um, and you cannot switch. This is a rule. It crashes the software. You can't switch from regular ultrasound mode to concurrent mode in the same patient. In real life, there's no reason they would. They would be doing one or the other. I, I can't see why they would. Um, but currently, and that's just the way the software works. So you want to make sure you close the patient you're in um, before you go into concurrent mode. And that's mainly a resolution thing because the resolution is going to try to jump to different settings depending on what mode you're in. Um, and so it'll just freeze into the old resolution and it won't resize unless you close out of the summit or close out of the patient. So now I'm going to start a new patient. And I'm going to this time choose ultrasound concurrent. I only have a single monitor connected. And so you'll see what it does. When you have a single monitor, you get a split screen. And it, it what it does in the current version of software is it closes the Summit software into a half screen, which is kind of all you can do. And unfortunately, if you have a single monitor, you don't see what the knobs do. Um, see that? Because the problem is if you do this, it obscures the ultrasound. And so um, in 3.1, that's, that's fixed, but in 3.0, when you're using concurrent mode with a single monitor, um, you can't see the knobs down here because it's because it's only opening the Summit software half a screen. Um, but other than that, you have full functionality. Um, and once it's open, like you see here, now you can come into the Summit software and open up another mode. So I can run concurrent EMG and ultrasound at the same time. Um, or maybe they're doing needle needle guidance, so they want to see um, EMG needle guidance. This is probably more common. So now they can see, hear the needle, see where the needle is in the body. It really gives them the full, the full effect. So concurrent mode is the mode they would use if they needed to perform a nerve conduction or an EMG or a repetitive nerve stem simultaneously with ultrasound. And again, this is going to be rare unless they're doing needle studies, and then they may want to do that. They may want to be, be able to using an EMG guidance and seeing ultrasound at the same time. Dual so screen, uh, when you run, yeah. Is, is this the same thing that we, is this the same thing that you did where you had the two screens uh, stacked? If yeah. you have two screens, can you put each of them on their own screen? Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. So if you have dual screens, the ultrasound is going to go off to the extended display, the second display, and the summit will be full screen on the first display. So the only time you get a split screen like this is if you're using concurrent mode on a single monitor. Okay. The other important thing to know about concurrent mode is that the, that the knobs and buttons only control the summit software. So when you're in concurrent mode, you have to use your mouse to control the ultrasound software, and then the, the base unit is controlling the summit software. Um, that's something else that's changed in the, in the latest in the next version, CR 3.0, when that comes out, probably early next year, you can, whatever window you click in, that's the window that the base unit will control. Um, so if you click in ultrasound window, then the base unit controls that. But for now, for 3.0, if you're in concurrent mode, the only way to control ultrasound is with your mouse or your keyboard. So that's, re that's really all there doing? is. Would one What's that? practitioner be doing? Would one practitioner be doing uh, concurrent? They would have to like have help, wouldn't they? Uh, no, they can do it. It's tricky, but they can do it. Because they're, they're already, if you think about it, they're already doing ultrasound with EMG, with needles. They're using ultrasound to guide the needle. The only diff difference is now the needle is connected to our amplifier. And so they're, they're still using two hands, one hand on the needle, one hand on the ultrasound probe. But they're, by having the probe plugged into our machine, they can hear that hear and see the EMG so they can tell when they're in the muscle. They can have the patient activate the muscle. 
Um, and then with the ultrasound, they can actually see, visually see that needle go into the muscle. They can, when they inject, they can see that it was a full injection and injected the entire portion of the muscle that they wanted to inject. So it's actually really useful to have the concurrent mode um, for needle studies. Okay. Or for chemo denervation. That's probably one of the biggest reasons people will be, will be buying ultrasound from us. Um, I, I imagine is um, probably people that do both. Do both, but uh, keto, chemo denervation is a common use for ultrasound, which is just needle needle studies. Okay. Or if they're just localizing, they want to study a needle that's a really small muscle or a muscle that's really small, and they want to do an EMG, a diagnostic EMG on it. Um, ultrasound would help them making sure that they're in the right muscle to locally localize the muscle. Or if they want to stick a muscle that's near the lung or an artery, and they want to avoid poking the lungs or the artery with the needle, um, that's another reason to use the ultrasound. All right, I think that we've covered it all, unless you guys have any other questions. Uh, no, no, thanks, I appreciate your time. Yep, you bet, I'm gonna end the meeting now. You guys have a good weekend.